One thing that I can say, and, and the way that God speaks to me is, God always talks to me through my situation, and I'm always looking for new ways to hear God, and Lord, what do you have to say? And I want to encourage every single one of you that you can find God anywhere. You can find God in any situation. If you simply just look and listen and, and figure out what God has to say, and even through this process of building the house, I really feel the hand of God and seeing things in a new way and in a new light. And, um, and it's really special. I just want to encourage you, think about where you're at today and ask the Lord to speak to you through that situation. And I promise he will. And recently... I have had a lot of different people come up to me and ask me all sorts of questions that I feel like many of us here in this room can relate to. We all have experience with this and we may even be asking some of these similar questions like, how do I know that I'm fully delivered? Or how do I know that God is talking to me? What if I can't hear God? Will God not speak to me? People are speaking, God is speaking to other people, but I don't hear God speaking to me. If I'm called to do this or that, then why is everything in my life seeming to contradict that very thing that it is that I want to do? Why is my life not getting easier now that I'm following God and, and not connected and following the devil's path anymore, but it seems like my life is getting harder? Can anyone relate to this? I mean, I see only a few hands, but I just said a lot of things that I know that there are people in this room that you are asking yourself those very questions. We ask ourselves these questions because we don't fully understand the meaning of our salvation. And I want to touch on this point just a little bit. If you guys could open up to Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Or sorry, not chapter 12. Chapter 2, verse 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, it says this, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. By the way, this is Apostle Paul speaking. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Amen? Amen. This is that scary scripture that nobody likes to talk about in church, but I'm going to talk about it today. We often ask ourselves these questions because we don't understand the meaning of our salvation. And from this, this scripture, it says we must work out our salvation and that we must serve God with deep fear and trembling. It makes us to understand that salvation is not just a one-time event, but an ongoing process. Now let me clarify something before all of you guys start to get all crazy here. We believe that the moment you give your life to Jesus Christ, you are saved. Your spirit is saved and your place in heaven is established and no one and nothing can take that away from you. We also believe that your soul, this is your mind, your emotions are being saved. That's why the reason why some of us, we can give our lives to Jesus Christ, but yet and we're Christians, but yet ex still experience bondage, can still experience negative thoughts, and maybe our life isn't perfect. It's because our soul is in the process of being saved. This is the part that we have to work out. And then we also believe that we will be saved. This speaks of our physical bodies. Our bodies, our physical bodies are going to pass away, but we're going to be given a new body in heaven. Our bodies will be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to touch on that second part. We are being saved. I want us to begin to understand the meaning of this part of our salvation. Because working out our salvation is like building a house. Working out our salvation is like building a house. It is not a one-time event, but an ongoing process. So here are the similarities of building a house and building your life in Jesus Christ. And that brings me to my message, title of my message today, build the life you love. Number one, in terms of building a house, your salvation is like the sales contract, right? So when you want to build a house, before you can start building this house, you first have to sign a sales contract saying, yes, 
I want to start this process. And this speaks of our salvation. When we give our life to Jesus Christ, it's like that sales contract. But there's one important thing for us to remember, that when you sign the sales contract, it doesn't mean the house is already there. The house hasn't been built yet, but the house is yours. Because this contract says that this is your house. My husband and I had this experience um, because the house that we're building, it's a cute little townhome, and... I was worried because I had sent the sales, the signed sales contract to our agent and I hadn't really heard back from, from them. And one thing that gave me a lot of comfort and peace is he said, hey, Brittany, don't worry. The house is yours. All I have is a piece of paper. Don't worry, Brittany. The house is yours. It has your name on it and nobody's going to take that from you. It gave me comfort. This is our salvation. Salvation speaks of that sales contract. That house is yours and nobody can take it away from you. And the best part is, is you didn't have to pay for it because Jesus Christ already paid for it. So you don't have to worry about, well, who's going to pay for my house? How am I going to work this out? How am I going to be good enough to earn and deserve this house? You didn't because it's been paid for, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. I wish somebody would pay for my house. That's why Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 1, I'm just going to quickly read this verse for you. Verses. John chapter 14, verse 1 through 4, he says, Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, I would have told you that I'm going... If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the, you know the way to where I am going. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Amen. That means that your house in heaven it's bought. It's there. But I want to talk about our, the house that we're building here on earth because Hopefully, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you're, it's not going to be just a few more hours until this physical life of yours is done. We expect that we're going to live, hopefully, a long and happy, healthy, natural life. Amen? Amen? So what do you do with the rest of your time on here? Salvation is like the sales contract. Number two, deliverance is like digging out the foundation. You must dig through all the dirt of your life before you can lay the foundation. So what does this mean? After salvation, there's the next step. After you get that sales contract, the next step is to dig the foundation. And digging that foundation speaks of our deliverance. We've got to dig out all the dirt before you can start laying the foundation, before you can start building your house. Because the Bible makes us to understand that those people who build their house upon sand are unwise, but those who build their house upon the solid rock, their house shall remain standing. Amen? Amen. We have to dig through all of the dirt. I want to say this, and I mentioned this before, and I'm going to keep on mentioning this because it doesn't hurt to say it a thousand times and a thousand times again. Deliverance comes from ch breaking the chains, but freedom comes from fighting your enemy. And it's important that we don't get that mixed up. Deliverance comes from breaking the chain. So maybe you come up here and you're in the prayer line and you receive that prayer and you receive deliverance. And the next day you wonder why your life is still the same. Because freedom comes from fighting your enemy. You can be delivered. The chains can be broken. But now you have to fight. Because we are in a battle. We are in this world. We are not of this world. And you are fighting a constant enemy. Amen. In terms of building a house, you've got to dig the foundation. You've got to dig out all the dirt. You've got to dig out all the rocks so that you can have this, this open hole now, right? Deliverance is, is like God giving you a shovel. Freedom comes when you use that shovel to dig, to dig yourself that, that hole that you need, to dig out all that dirt and all of that grime and, and the rocks that are blocking the way. For some people, this process is much harder than others. 
or at least so it seems. We can look at other people's lives and say, well, why was this process of deliverance so much easier for that person? Why was it so hard for me? Our grounds are different. It doesn't mean that nobody has dirt to dig out. Everybody has dirt to dig out, amen? But some people, they may have rocks and boulders in their dirt that need to come out. Maybe there's some deeply rooted tree roots that need to come out before you can lay the foundation. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't compare your process to others because sometimes the best locations have the toughest ground. I don't think you heard me. Sometimes the best locations have the toughest grounds. Do not compare yourself to other people because maybe you're going through it right now. Maybe you're going through this process and you're trying to dig and dig and dig and it seems like you keep on hitting walls and barriers. But God is faithful because all of the, these tests that you're going through lead to your testimony. It gives you a message. It gives you something to say. You've been through something. Now you have something to say. Hallelujah. Your purpose is different. Therefore, your house is going to look different. Digging your foundation is going to look different. Some of us, God gives us a shovel. This is our deliverance. Sometimes God gives us a shovel to dig things out. For other people, he gives them this. It's all right, you can laugh. <laughs> but it's so true. I, I actually don't know what this is called. An excavator. God will meet you where you are at. For some of us, we just need a shovel. We got this. We can do this. The, the ground, we just got to dig out all the dirt. Some of you, you need a bulldozer. You need an excavator. But God is faithful to be right there with you. He's not going to make you do it by yourself. He's not going to make you put in all the effort by yourself. He will meet you where you're at. It doesn't matter if you have rocks. It doesn't matter if you have deeply rooted trees. God will meet you at the point of your need and he is faithful he is so 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 faithful to stand with you every single step of the way but it's not enough to dig a, dig the hole that's not enough you have to fill it you have to fill the hole and what do you fill this hole with you must fill it with the word of god The solid rock of God's word. That's why the Bible says that the wise man built his house upon the rock. When you fill, it's not enough to be empty. You have to be filled. This is your foundation. As soon as you go through this process, this process of deliverance, digging out the dirt, digging that hole, and filling that foundation with the word of God, with the truth, with, with the knowledge that I am who I am. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I have what God says that I can have. This is my solid rock. This is my foundation. This is... Excuse me, this is the word of God. Number three, God's calling on your life is like the blueprints. Something interesting to understand about blueprints is that when you have the blueprints, you know what your house is supposed to look like, but other people can't because only you have that. Only you know that. God will give you the blueprints of your life. Many of us, after we get saved, as we're going through this process of deliverance, we begin to understand the calling of God upon our life. We start dreaming dreams and having visions of who we are to be, what we are to become. Some of us, we say, I want to be a preacher. I want to be a worshiper. I want to have a children's ministry. I want to do this. I want to do that. Whatever it may be, God will give you the blueprints. But the, the thing to remember is that you know what your life is supposed to look like, but other people can't see that. So oftentimes we can know what's coming. Oh yeah, I have this foundation. I know what's going to be built upon this house. And it's easy to get discouraged when other people can't see what you see. It takes time. You build your life according to the promise of God upon your life. And others may criticize what you are doing because they haven't seen your blueprints but over time they will begin to see the framework 
as those two by fours start going up, they'll begin to see the outline of what this is going to be. Your house may not be fleshed out yet. It may not be a finished product, but sooner or later, over time, people will begin to see what this house is going to be. People will begin to understand and see the evidence of what you will become. Don't be discouraged if at first it seems like your blueprints or your vision for your life is being criticized. Just wait. You stay with God. You listen to his word. You do what God says that you should do. You serve with all of your heart even when you don't want to and do everything with a good attitude because sooner or later people will see the evidence of what you are becoming and God will use this as the framework of your life. Don't give up. Don't give up if you're not seeing the finished product right away. Don't leave your house abandoned when it's half done. Keep going and keep on working. And I want to sit on this next moment for just a second. As my husband and I have been building our house, one of the things that we had the option for was for upgrades. So one of the things that my husband and I have chosen is that we want to upgrade the countertops. So the standard package is that this house comes with Formica countertops with a laminate seal. Nothing wrong with that. It looks really beautiful. But we've decided that we wanted to go with the quartz countertop because it looks prettier, it's stronger, and it lasts longer. Remember that. But these upgrades don't just come for free. We have to pay for those upgrades. And when we're talking about the Christian life, we're talking about building your home. There will be times, and se- not just times and seasons, but you may want upgrades in your life. Maybe you want to walk in the power of God. Maybe you want to operate in the gift of prophecy. Maybe you want to speak in tongues. Maybe you, in your heart, you desire the gift of word of knowledge. These are upgrades, if you will, in your life. I want to focus on something here. And this is important to remember. The gifts of God are free. The gifts of God are free. But to receive them... You must be with God. And intimacy with God will cost you everything. It will cost you your time. It will cost you your pride. And it will cost you your own will. That's why Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, not my will, but thy will. Though he possessed all of the gifts of God, it wasn't according to his will of what he was about to do. Jesus Christ even asked, Lord, if, if you would take this cup from me but not my will thy will it's important to remember that the gifts of God though they may be free it will cost you your time your pride and your will to be intimate with God and it's in that intimacy that God will begin to open up doors for you he will begin to to teach you how to prophesy he will release his gift upon you you will begin speaking in tongues you will begin interpreting tongues whatever your heart's desire may be but it requires intimacy with the Holy Spirit You see, many of us, we want to prophesy because it looks good. God wants you to prophesy so that you can save souls. There's a difference there. We want to prophesy because it looks good. God wants us to prophesy so that you can save souls. If you build a house and you put in all of the upgrades, but you don't invite anyone over, then what were all of your upgrades for? If you build the house of your life and have all of the gifts of God, but you don't reach out to others, then what are you even doing? Like Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, he said, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of the angels, but I didn't love others, I would be nothing more than a noisy gong or a clang- clanging cymbal. 
If I could prophesy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move the mountains, but I didn't love others, I would be nothing. You have to remember this, church. Why do you want the upgrades in your life? Why do you want that? It is for the purpose of winning souls. God wants to build our house. God wants to make us everything in your mind that you see, the blueprints that you see in your house with this upgrade and that upgrade. And God wants to use you, but God wants you to invite people over. Because we see the beauty of our upgrades, but God sees the function. We see the beauty of our upgrades, but God sees the function. You can have all these beautiful things, but if you don't use it, then what is it there for? I have a funny story my sister was telling me about my nephew. He's 10 years old and his best friend, John Paul. And my sister lives in a, in a house where they have um, my husband and, and her husband recently remodeled this house. And they've been living in it and they put in new countertops and it has that really nice looking, um, like marble looking laminate, right? And so my nephew, he, him and his buddy, John Paul, they decided that they were going to make dinner for everyone. So what did they do? They whipped out that box of macaroni and cheese, <laughs> boiled their water, got through all the end until it was time to dump the water, the boiling water, out of the pot. They strained the water, and then they put the burning pot on top of the laminate countertop. Y'all know what happened next, right? There was this interesting smell <laughs> and a nice big old burn on the countertop. <laughs> I'm saying this because when we're talking about these upgrades and I mentioned that Ricard and I, we had decided to go with a different kind of countertop because it's prettier, it's stronger, and it lasts longer. And... <laughs> When I think about that burn, it reminds me of oftentimes what can happen when we're pursuing the gifts of God. And we have this upgrade in our life. God wants you to be able to step out in faith. God wants you to prophesy. God wants you to talk to people. And even if you mess up and do something stupid, you might get burned, but it's not going to leave a mark. Amen? You might get burned, but it's not going to leave a mark. Hallelujah. And lastly, my final point is this. The finished house represents you living in your divine destiny. But while the house is finally built, it doesn't mean that you never have to do anything again. A house always needs upkeep and maintenance. You've got all these beautiful things, but you've got to mow the lawn. You've got to clean your house. You've got to keep up on your utility bill. You've got to do all these things to keep your house maintained. So just in your Christian life, when you think you've like finally got there and you're, you're doing the right things, you've still got to maintain your house. You need to go to life group. You need to be connected to people. You need to read the word. You need to pray because all of these things will maintain the house you live in, will maintain and upkeep your life. And secondly, sometimes after time, things need to be updated, right? Some old things that have gotten worn out need to be replaced. The things that looked good in a home 20 years ago don't look good today. You've got to update it and you've got to change it. Sometimes you've got to update your thinking. Maybe you've been doing one thing one way for a long time in your Christian walk with God and that's been working with you, working for you for a really long time. But sometimes in this process, God will want you to update your thinking. It reminds me of, of Moses as he was leading the people of God through the wilderness. And for, for years and years and years, Moses would strike the rock and water would come out of the rock. But then God told Moses one day, Moses, I want you to speak to the rock. I don't want you to strike it. But Moses made the mistake of unresting what was comfortable to him. And he struck the rock. Some of us, you may be walking in your, in your divine destiny already. 
But remember, be open for God. Be open to what he's doing. If God wants you to update your thinking, listen to God. Because it's important for us to move with God and to follow his trend, to follow what God is doing. Ministry back in the 90s doesn't look the same as it looks today. God is doing a new thing. God will move in new waves. God will do things differently just so that you won't stay inside the same box. God wants to challenge your thinking, challenge your ways so that you can be effective in Jesus' name. And I want to leave you guys with my final thoughts. Number one, have patience in the process. Those of you who have built a house, you know this, that it takes time. Rome was not built in a day. It takes time to build the life that you love. So don't get tripped up when things are taking longer than what you expected. Or if if challenges are coming your way, you can expect challenges, but your response is what is important. People expect that the process of deliverance will be a quick turnaround, but it takes time. So give God the time that he needs to do what he needs to do in your life and enjoy the process. Amen. And secondly, if I can have the worship team come up. And secondly, there is pain in the progress. Yeah, I didn't mess that up. There is pain in the progress. When you are progressing in life, when you are moving forward, you will sometimes face painful and challenging situations. No one who ever built a house ever said, well, that was easy. (laughs) Right? I don't know if any of you guys in here work in construction. I'm going to assume about 50% of us in this room. No one ever said, well, that was so much fun. That was a great time. But you know what there was? There was progress. My husband, he started doing construction about a year ago, and I swear, he comes home every day with a new injury. And I'm like, what's going on? He nearly like broke his entire finger off when a forklift fell on his hand. Like, come on. (laughs) There is pain in the progress. Progress is being made. Don't get confused. When you're asking yourself questions like, why isn't this getting easier? I'm delivered now. Life doesn't simply get easier, you just get stronger. Amen. Life doesn't get easier. You get stronger. Amen. There is pain in the progress, but that pain is a sign that you are moving forward. Amen.